What's up? Hey guys, it's Justin from Justin's HIV Journal, and I just wanted to say and confess something to you guys. It's kind of a, a long time coming, but um, it's been about four months, and I decided to do a little experiment. Um, I stopped drinking, and a lot of people that know me are like, oh my gosh, what? Is the world coming to an end? Justin, stop drinking? I don't understand this. This is crazy. Um, because, you know, in my past, I've been known as a little bit of a party boy, like, as far as going out, having drinks, and, you know, doing crazy things. Um, some will uh, remain uh, nameless and anonymous, and I will not be saying anything about what I've done in the past, but, because that was the past, and I've learned from it, and that's the only important thing. So, um, I decided, I, I went to the doctor about four months ago, and I, I looked at my T-cell count, and usually my T-cell counts are around three-something, usually, and, you know, it's decent, it's not great, it's not bad either, but, you know, they can be higher. So I decided I, wouldn't, I wasn't going to do anything different but stop drinking. So I went ahead and stopped drinking, and, um... For a, for a while, so it's been about it's been about four months, and I and uh, so I went back to the doctor, and he said your T cell count is four fifty now, and I said what did I do differently that made my T cell count to jump up so much, and I was like a hundred. That's pretty. That's pretty impressive. That's pretty cool. You know, um, a lot of people would say that's nothing. A lot of people would say, oh my gosh, you could be so much higher, Justin. What's wrong with you? Let's take one step at a time, and one day at a time. So, um, you know, it's kind of funny. I, I said that I would never, um, probably ever stop drinking because, because you know, I liked it so much. So, but then I, I realized that there are other alternatives that I discovered. So I went to the bar and I had a no duels. Eh, it was okay. It wasn't bad. So then I decided to do more in-depth research, and I found something called St. Pauli's, which is a beer. St. Pauli's an A. So people say, no, St. Paulina, I think. Yes, St. Paulina, <laughs> sorry. Um, and and they have an amber flavor, and it's actually pretty good. And I'm starting to prefer that more than regular beer. And also they have non-alcoholic wine, because I'm a big wine drinker. I love it. I was like, oh, this is perfect. Um, I just have to remember not to overindulge, because I know it doesn't have alcohol in it. <laughs> and my father turned me on to... Um, he, um, I came over to his house with my brother, and they had a, um, my brother had a beer, and my dad had some champagne, and I said, oh, you don't have anything non-alcoholic. And he said, no. I said, what about that non-alcoholic champagne you have upstairs? And I got it, and I said, oh, it's pretty good. It's not bad. And it didn't give me a headache like regular champagne used to. Um, regular champagne, I could only have two glasses of it, and it would give me a huge headache the next day. Um... But, like, so, I just stopped drinking, and my, physically, I feel so much better. Um, a lot of people are like, every, you know, after they have a long day at work, like, I need a drink. And I'm like, well, I do too, but it can be non-alcoholic for me, but that's fine. That's my definition of a drink, which is, you know, everybody has their own definition of something, and, you know, just respect that. That's all I ask, is respect it, and respect me for my decision. So, um... So I decided, I'm like, okay, so I'll just be a non-alcoholic drinker, which is great. And physically, obviously, my T-cell count's going up. That's proof to me that whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it right. So now we're going to do another endeavor of exercising. Now, everybody's like, oh, you know, Justin, you don't need to exercise. You look great. I'm like, okay, well, yeah, I have a 29-inch waist. That's nice and all. But the thing is, still, just because it looks good on the outside doesn't mean it's good on the inside. And, um, you know, I can tell you that it's uh, HIV, you know, you could look great and still be looking bad on the inside. So, <laughs> so um, you know, makeup doesn't cover what's, you know, inside. And I don't wear makeup. But, um, <laughs> but, um, so... So, you know, drinking when you have HIV, there's also complications. And I kind of looked up, you know, I did my research, you know, it changes how medication works in your body. Or even, or sometimes it stops it from working, period. So you want to make sure that, you know, you're not drinking so much when you're, when you're HIV positive. Because a lot of times depression, drinking, um, go hand in hand because you're depressed, you have HIV, or you have some kind of... Uh, baggage there that you need to get through and so you go through it with drinking and you drink a lot. A lot of people that are positive do drink a lot because 
they're kind of trying to get away from the issues that they haven't addressed themselves. So, um, also another thing, it hurts your liver, which we all know because the liver absorbs alcohol. Um, but the thing is, that's especially bad if you have HIV and hepatitis C because hepatitis C directly affects your liver. So, you want to make sure that you're careful about the, uh, the amount of alcohol that you consume if you have hepatitis C. Um, now, another one that it affects your judgment of, safe, of not practicing safe sex. Um, so, we all know that. I mean, kind of like it affects your judgment. Uh, your inhibitions are down. Um, so, you know, that's exactly how I was infected. And sometimes, and sometimes, you know, in the past, that's exactly how I would end up not even having safe sex is by drinking alcohol. And sometimes, you know, we have to realize and analyze that, oh, what was the mistake here? What would have been the deciding factor for me to just say no? Alcohol, that was my issue. Maybe that's not your issue, but it is my issue, so. Or was my issue. So, <laughs> so um, you know, also you have to make sure that uh, when you drink alcohol, you have to remember to take your medication, your HIV medication. Alcohol can make you forget. And, you know, we've all done it. Uh, or not all of us, but some of us, most of us that do drink, sometimes we'll forget, and it happens. You know, sometimes we forget to take our medication, and when you drink alcohol, you'll forget even more. Um, and I'm not being a judge, you know, here, but, you know, it might be possible. Who knows? But, um, you know, it weakens your immune system. Alcohol does weaken your immune system, and you, we all are, you know, that are HIV positive depend on our immune system to fight off things like common cold or... Um, pneumonia or things like that, just that that affects others, but might affect us more great. It might affect us great, <laughs> greater than others. So, um, you know, we have to make sure that we take care of ourselves and our bodies. But that's about it. You know, it it alcohol does a lot, but you know, we have to kind of be vigilant. So that's what I wanted to confess to everybody, and uh, happy holidays to you guys, and um, happy. Kwanzaa, Merry Christmas, Happy Yule, uh, Ram Happy Ramadan, whatever, I don't know what to say, just say Happy Holidays to encompass all, so it's great. Anyway, I will talk to you guys later, and have a good day.